Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. This is going to be a fun episode with Nathan from Kestrel Knives out of California. Before we get to that episode, I wanted to remind you that the Kuyu World Tour is kicking off May 20th in Dixon, California at the Kuyu Garage Sale, and they're going to run all the way until November, and they're going to hit 26 cities across Uh, The western U.S., they're going to be in Oregon, Washington, Montana, Idaho, Colorado, Nebraska, Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas, uh, New Mexico, Utah, Nevada, Arizona, and then finishing up uh, back in California. Uh, You can go to kuyu.com forward slash world tour to get the exact dates when they'll be uh, nearest in the nearest town by you. Make sure to check them out. Uh, they're going to have all of the Kuyu gear line that you can actually go and try on and grab and feel and and you know get a sense for. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Kuyu products, you can get a sense for it. So they're going to have special guests. They're going to have expert clinics. They're going to have special deals and discounts on the tour. And um, it's going to be a great opportunity for a lot of you that maybe haven't seen Kuyu gear to uh, stop in and stop at the trailer. It's an amazing 53-foot trailer um, that has these big racks that are going to fold out and uh, basically a full display of all Kuyu gear. So uh, guys, make sure to check that out on Kuyu.com. I want to thank Kuyu for their sponsorship of this podcast. I also want to thank GoHunt.com Insider phonescope.com and the outdoorsman's and you can check in the show notes to get the promo codes and get the discounts uh, for each one of these great companies i just want to thank them for their support i also want to thank you guys for your support and i encourage you to send me uh, some emails direct messages on instagram and facebook if you have any questions or comments people you want to see on the podcast uh, questions about your hunt strategy, you know, gear questions. Uh, let's hear them. I try and respond as quick as possible. Uh, now, keep in mind, I'm going to be gone for about 30 days uh, turkey hunting uh, in Sonora, Mexico on my Gould's turkey hunts. I will have fairly limited coverage here and there. Uh, I will try and get back with you. Uh, but once I get back kind of mid-May, uh, we'll be uh, back and uh, full full swing of things. So if you don't get a response right away, it's just because I'm hunting. Uh, we are booking, by the way, for 2018 Gould's Turkey uh, hunts in Sonora, Mexico. We are also booking for the uh, upcoming coos deer season down in Sonora, Mexico for December and January coos deer hunts with Colburn and Scott Outfitter. So feel free to send me an email. You can visit our website at colburnandscottoutfitters.com. Also, my personal website, jscottoutdoors.com. I appreciate it. If you haven't, go on iTunes. If you're a supporter and listener of this podcast, Uh, I could use all the reviews that you guys could leave. Give a fair review um, with with, uh, positive comments if you you like the podcast. That helps our placement on iTunes, and I appreciate that. So let's get right to this episode with Nathan and Kestrel Knives. Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. I am actually in Dixon, California. And I'm here with the owner of Kestrel Knives. I've got Nathan Creech. Nathan, how you doing? Good. How about you? Good. Uh, last time I saw you, I believe, was it at the SCI show? Yep. And um, we had a good show. Did you then go to Western Hunting as well in Utah? Yeah, I went to Western Hunting. How was it? Oh, it was awesome. Yeah, like always, super busy and got to see a lot of uh, old friends and meet some new ones. Good. I want you to tell uh, me and the listeners uh, how you started Kestrel Knives, you know, how the concept of it came up and and um, the beginnings. Sure. Um, so it originally started um, when I was really frustrated with not being able to sharpen my own knives. Um, and as a hunter, that's kind of a uh, important important thing to know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of set out to teach myself um, and I got pretty pretty dang good at it. Um, and I ended up uh, posting some pictures of uh, some knives I had sharpened and modified on a forum. And some guys had 
ended up emailing me asking if I could do the same thing to theirs. Um, and long story short, I started modifying a lot of high end knives for guys. And I'm talking, you know, in the 500 to a thousand dollar range knives. So in other words, they were sending you their knife. Yep. So and then they, you were sharpening it and getting it. Yeah. So they would send me their knife from all over the world, Europe, Australia, wherever, just, just uh, high end collectors. And I would, they would want some sort of modification, whether it was sharpening or making uh, handles for it or giving it a satin finish if it was coated, stuff like that. Um, and so I got pretty good at on the, on the belt grinder and, and modifying them and kind of dipped into making my own knives. Um, Fast forward to 2011, when uh, Jason started Kuyu, um, he had his grand opening, and I ended up coming up to it, and at the end of it, I walked up to him and showed him one of my knives, and he he thought it was the coolest thing ever. It was one of my uh, ultralight titanium ones, and uh, he's like, man, you should, you should make those, you know, there's nothing else like it, and it was something that I had kind of, you know, thrown around in my head, but never really, you know taking it too seriously right. you know and uh we ended up kind of hitting it off and he invited me on a blacktail hunt um and so we ended up going on that and he kind of uh he pushed me a little bit more he's like you should start a brand blah 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 and so it uh kind of all started right then and there and i jumped head first in and here i am now so the name kestrel how did you land on that uh i had been brainstorming with uh my now wife, um, for a little while on names when I, when I decided I was going to go ahead and, and start something and, uh, was just running through it. And she ended up saying the name Kestrel and I immediately liked it. And, and I'm, I'm real big into birds and stuff like that. So I, I knew that, you know, the Kestrel was a fast, small, you know, light bird. And I was like, wow, that's, that's perfect, you know? And, and, uh, so that's how it, how it came to be. That's awesome. And so is Kestrel Knives your full-time job or do you also have a full-time job? Uh, it is now. I was a landscape contractor um, who specialized in like native and edible gardens. Um, and I did that for a little while. Um, and now I've jumped full-time into Kestrel and been doing it now for I think two and a half, three years full-time. How has uh, the explosion, if you will, of your company, I mean, ha how have you been able to adapt to um, you know, how well received it's your knives have been in the marketplace. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been pretty cool. You know, I, I wasn't sure how it was going to go at first, you know, it's kind of, there's a lot of old timers that are in the knife community that, you know, have, um, a, you know, good reputations and have been in it forever. So I was kind of like the new cat on the block and, um, it, it's, it's been well received. Um, and I couldn't, have asked for a better start. Obviously, you know, Jason's given me a lot of help with it and, and being kind of, um, associated with him has, mm -hmm. has helped a lot. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been growing as fast as I can handle and, and, uh, yeah, it's been going great. So you got some of your product here. I noticed. So yeah. Yeah. I tell me about your knives. Um, so I kind of specialize in the, the ultralight you know, backpacking and hunting knives. Um, a lot of my knives, you know, don't come with handles just cause they, I want them to be minimal and, and lightweight as possible. Um, now when you say don't come with handles, the knife that you have in your hand here, mm -hmm. it, it, it has a handle, but in essence it's, it, whether it's titanium or metal or whether it's titanium or metal or, or what have you, um, it, yeah. it has a handle, but it doesn't have, it doesn't have, I, should, I guess I should say scales. Um, they call them scales or grips. Um, so it doesn't have those. So it just has a real, uh, minimal look and feel to it and obviously reduces the weight quite a bit. Um, so for guys that are, are worried about weight and don't necessarily need, you know, the full comfort, um, of the grips, then this is the way to go. Do you go by Nathan or Nate? Nathan. But some people yeah. call me Nathan, okay. so it doesn't matter. Nathan, we've got here in front of us um, out on the table, and I'm going to take a picture of this for my Instagram account. Uh, you basically have a, a spread of knives here. What, do you, what are we looking at? 
So you're kind of looking at my uh, full range of models, everything from uh, all the skeletonized models to a couple of my different handled versions, and then a couple of the different ways I uh, come up with concepts, and then also the Giru project knife. Nice. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, I'm seeing here, this is kind of how you develop your concept, and what I'm looking at is basically cardboard, and, and, and so... This is exactly how you shape in your mind and you kind of make it. And, and and I'm sure you go through a bunch of these trying to figure out something new. Yeah. So I kind of have a general idea in my head of what I want, you know, the model to be like, um, depending on what style and type of knife um, I want to do. And so what I'll do is I'll get on the computer and get on one of my CAD programs and kind of draw it out on there and then I uh, end up printing that out and cutting it out of some cardboard just so I can see uh, visually um, something and then also so I can get a feel for how it's gonna gonna feel in the hand I guess um, and then I kind of go from there with any changes that I make what material are your knives made out of um, so some of them are titanium, the really light ones, um, are titanium. And then from there I go to ABL steel, um, which is kind of a, uh, mid grade stainless, but, uh, is works, that what this is? Yeah. But works really well when you run it hard. Um, so it's very easy to sharpen, but holds a really good edge when it's at a high rock well. Um, and then from there, I go up to S35VN, which is a really high-grade stainless. Um, and then just recently, the Giru project, we are going to do a run of knives in S90, which is a really, really high-end uh, stainless. It's probably the best stainless on the market. Um, what makes stainless some stainless better than others? Uh, well, every... Every steel, um, depending on the heat and cryo treat, um, will be a different hardness, but every steel has different properties. So some will hold an edge better. Some have better strength. Um, some are are more stainless than others and and whatnot. Um, but in terms of, I guess what makes it better, um, it's just overall the edge is going to hold longer on that. Okay. Um, and so that's kind of how we, we measure the steels is, is edge holding, right? Um, so, yeah, the S90 is, is kind of the pinnacle of, of stainless steels right now. So this latest knife, this is the Giru Project yep. knife. The Mountain the, Caper. The Mountain Caper. One of the things that I see that I really like about this is it, it, it's small, um, but looks really sturdy and strong, but it's going to be great for specifically getting under the burrs when you're mm-hmm. caping and, mm-hmm. and get in those tight spots. You yep. know, I do a lot of coos deer hunting and do obviously sheep hunting um, and, you know, getting up underneath the, the, the pedicle and, and, and working your knife, you need a smaller knife like this, mm-hmm. you know, to get in those tight spots. But this knife I, I feel like I could do everything with this knife right here. I mean, the whole I could do a whole animal right here with this knife. Yeah, you definitely can. Um, I designed it specifically for the detail work, you know, peeling the, the eyes, lips, ears, and nose and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, it, it's great for that. You know, it has a full handle, but it allows you to choke up on it and get in close. Yeah, like you have all kinds of dexterity with mm-hmm. this knife. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I went with the thin handle, so it allowed you to be able to, to manipulate it really well. So let me ask you, so the Giru project, you started a concept and then the way Giru works is then people then had uh, input into the design of this particular knife? Yeah, correct. So I came up with the general concept of the knife and what I wanted that model to be. Um, And then from there, we allowed all the developers to choose the steel um, the blade length, whether or not there was going to be jimping around the blade for grip, and then also the hole in the blade. So this isn't the actual final design. It's the general shape and everything, but the final design is going to have some jimping in the front here and then along the spine and all the way around just so there's a little bit extra grip with that skeletonizing. And is that what you would call? This is jimping right here. Jimping. Yeah. So just the, the ridges that, that create a little bit of grip. Okay. And so... 
I believe I have this knife. I have this one, this one, and this yeah. one. I so believe. you have you have the uh, sportsman set, which is yeah. my most popular set. It kind of covers all your bases um, and gives you a Skinner, a, a kind of a boning general use knife, and then your EDC. So back to the Guru knife, mm -hmm. um, the j jimping. Jimping, yeah. The jimping, you're going to have some right up here exactly. and then some back here. Back there and then also at the very point so you can get up there. So you could put your finger literally like this. Yep. And, okay, yep. that's awesome. Yeah. that And was was that from people's input wanting it way high on the knife out on the tip like that? Uh, yeah, I had had a few people tell me that, but I knew that I kind of wanted – you know, after using knives with jimping and, and seeing how it all worked, um, I knew that I wanted to add that and, and have that be a feature. But yeah, we did let the Guru guys, uh, developers, uh, choose whether or not they wanted that. And and with Guru, so this knife, tell me how Guru works, I guess. Let's start there. Yeah, so Guru works where you basically have a product or an idea um, and then you submit you submit that idea and set up a project to where the project developers then log in and are able to choose various features, colors, and whatnot. Um, from there, they, they're able to share it with their friends, and then it basically goes to a voting process. Um, whichever design ends up winning then goes to funding. Um, after that, there's a 24 hour pre-purchase window for people that actually help develop it so that they're able to, um, buy it at a discount, mm -hmm. um, which then helps, uh, the company that's running the project fund the production run. So in other words, the, the people that help design it, get it at a discounted price, they mm -hmm. get first shot at the knife, but Correct. then, then other people that didn't take part in the design they also get a chance to exactly, yeah. fund so, the project but from you as a designer or from you as a manufacturer you in essence have a product that people have voiced their opinion on and th then it goes to production mm -hmm. but in other words you also have pre-sales mm -hmm. so it's not like you designing specifically a knife probably like your sportsman set where you had your input and then you have to sell it. So you, in, in other words, as a manufacturer, you take all the risk. Yep, exactly. So it's a kind of a win-win for everybody because it, it uh, helps me come up with the capital to fund the production run, tells me exactly what guys want. And then the people that are most involved in it and, and want that design end up getting it for for basically half off so sure i mean it's a it's great a great concept. great little concept let's talk about your sportsman's package which are these three knives here which you say has kind of been your best seller do you think it's your best seller because it's been in your product line the most the longest um, or do you think it's just serves a functionality that covers a wide spectrum in other words, you know, with these three knives, you can do anything and everything. Yeah, it's probably a little bit of both. I guess I don't have too many, uh, too many styles yet. So it's, it's one of the only ones you can choose in terms of a package. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I kind of put that them together just because I, I feel that it covers everything that you, um, are going to need to do as a, as a hunter or backpacker. Um, you know, you, you have your Skinner, um, for the, for the quick skinning work, you have your, your Ovis Hunter, which, which helps with the, uh, boning or long deep cuts. Um, you're able to process animals really fast with that Ovis Hunter. And then the EDC, which is the everyday carry, which, you know, is kind of your general use knife that, that you can use for anything. And standard, your knives don't come with any wrapping, correct? Exactly. Yeah. That, that, that is an option when you purchase, if you want paracord wrap. And then these sheaths that you have here, um, every knife does come with a sheath, though. Every knife comes with an ultralight Kydex sheath. Okay. Um, the, uh, the the Kuyu camo ones are extra. Okay. And then you ra you also sell them wrapped. Yep, correct. But yeah. people can wrap their own as well. Yeah, which is uh, actually something I need to do is a video um, on how to wrap. But, yeah, it's very easy. You know, once the, uh, once the paracord gets gets dirty or bloody, you just cut it off and, and replace it. It's a simp simple, cheap, you know, an easy uh, way to add grip and, and some aesthetics to your knife. 
Do you feel that it gives you that much more advantage having it wrapped, having the grip? Um, a little bit, you know, I guess if you're, I haven't had too much issues with it, but some guys, you know, want just that little bit extra grip, you know, when they're getting in, in deep and the, you know, the, the knife starts to get bloody. Um, it does, it does help with that a little bit. Um, but I, I, I've noticed that I don't necessarily need it. And so all of my knives, I just run skeletonized just, just for that little bit of weight. This reduction. EDC, um, I, I, I remember caping out this last December. I caped out a, a sheep with this EDC, and I was amazed. I was jamming that tip mm-hmm. and and into bone, and you know, caping, and I was amazed how sharp it stayed. What do you attribute that to? Um, I attribute that to the the actual heat treat recipe um, that my heat treating company does. Um, they they are the the leading edge in terms of heat treating. It's called Peter's Heat Treat. Um, they, Brad over there has come up with the best recipes for bringing out the best in every steel. Um, so I let him know exactly what Rockwell I want to run the knife at. Um, and for hunting, you basically want a a hard, a hard or a high Rockwell. So the edge holds, um, and this particular steel AEBL takes a really, really fine edge and holds an edge really well at that high, high hardness. Talk to me about being an expert in sharpening like you are. Talk about the, the different pitch and angle of, of your edge. Kind of walk me through fr- from an elementary standpoint to more of an you know, advanced standpoint of, of edge. Yeah, so uh, all my knives come with a convex edge. Um, it's the edge that I feel... Um, is the best overall for for strength, um, and it's also the easiest to sharpen. Um, you don't need a specific angle, so to say, um, when you sharpen it. You can, you know, if you're using a strop or a belt sander, um, it, I mean, it couldn't be any easier to sharpen. Um, so that's why I do the convex edges. I've, I've never really done any V grinds, um, just because I've always been a, a bit a fan of the convex, um, and, and it's always kind of been the standout in testing um so yeah that's what that's what i like to run all my knives is convex edges okay and then i see these knives over here they have fancy looking handles what is this one made out of yeah so this particular knife was a custom order uh from a customer it's uh my mouflon skinner model um and this particular knife has uh, iron wood on it um, some ironwood burl, so some really, really nice stuff. Um, so I actually need to finish sanding this out and, and making a sheath for the guy. Where did the ironwood come from? Uh, from a company called Ironwood LLC or something like okay. that out of Arizona, yeah. Um, just a place that I order my handle material from. Ironwood is known as really hard wood. Yeah, it is a uh, pain in the butt to sand. I'll bet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it looks beautiful once it's all buffed oh, it's, out and, and everything. Yeah, you can um, see the grain. It's beautiful. And yeah. then what is this one? And so this is also a mouflon um, with a canvas micarta handle. Um, so it's kind of similar to actually what I'm going to be offering here soon. Um, my Ovis Hunters and mouflon skinners will have the option of handles so this one and this one correct yeah um, and you can see what it looks like without the uh okay without the handle on it um so yeah i'll be offering a couple different or probably three or four different handle uh colors um with those models and and i'll be opening up pre-orders for those soon nathan what do you like to hunt the most yourself I'm a blacktail fanatic, you know, growing up in California, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of what you, you just fall into and, uh, yeah. Archery, uh, rifle, archery and rifle. Yep. You got to extend your season, right? Yeah. So, but, uh, don't you, you guys start like in July, your blacktail. Yeah. So the earliest season for blacktail in California starts in July and that's for a zone, which is kind of like, uh, a little bit south of the Bay Area, up to Sonoma. So it's a it's a pretty big zone. Most of it is private, though. Um, so unless you have a have a ranch that you can get on or something, it's 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 pretty hard hunting. I mean the the public areas that are open for that are 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 very crowded, and it's it's extremely hot at that time of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's not too many bucks in those areas. But 
still fun to get out. We we actually call it ultra hot hunting. <laughs> <laughs> ultra hot. And then do you get, does the season pretty liberal and you get to hunt them all the way into the rut or? No, so we, we don't get rut. That's one bad thing about California deer seasons. Um, unless you're hunting some special draw or something later on, um, it, it actually, our seasons end right before the rut. So we get no help on that end. Gotcha. And do you typically get a buck every year? I mean, uh, typically, How's your success? um, actually the last two, three years, I haven't been able to get out hunting much, um, just with the growth of Kestrel and, and that being my busy time. Um, I, I've only been out to get, get out for a couple trips. Um, and I haven't been out scouting or anything. And so it's kind of, it's pretty difficult, uh, hunting blacktail here in California, um, to go in blind somewhere and, and, and hope to find a nice mature bug. When you're not promoting your business and working on your business, what else do you like to do in your free time? Uh, I like to work out a lot. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm training a lot for, for hunting. Um, I also like, uh, I like growing stuff. Um, so I'm big into fruit trees and vegetables and stuff like that. So you have, have your own garden. And yeah. Stuff? Yeah. I have a nice, some raised beds in the backyard and, and, and I like to grow different types of fruit and stuff like that. So it's kind of something that keeps me busy on the side and cool and, and whatnot. Is there any particular fruit that, that is like your most, uh, unique or off the wall uh, or something crazy let's fruit? Let's see. I got so many. Um, probably the most unique that I grow is the passion fruit. Um, the lily koi, uh, I have a few vines of that and I actually have to hand pollinate each flower, um, because the bees for whatever reason, uh, don't know how to pollinate it or, 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 or they I don't know. For some reason, it takes them like last year, it took them about three months uh, to figure out how to pollinate it um, or how to gather the pollen, I should say. Um, and I noticed that w when they were able to do that, that I could stop pan pollinating. But this year, for whatever reason, I don't know if the, the closest hive moved or whatever, there's been no pollination going. So I literally go out there and grab each uh, grab each one and, and hand pollinate it, but it's all worth it because I get a pretty much a hundred percent success rate on that. And, uh, they're, they're just awesome. So wow. <laughs> since I saw you too, you've gotten married. I did. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, about, uh, yeah. Thank you. About three weeks now got married and, uh, yep. You guys are off and running. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, good for yeah, you. Yeah. Good for you. So new at, at Kestrel, you've got the this, this Giru knife, mm -hmm. and then you've got some other things you're working on. Yep. Um, typically, when do you release new products? I mean, do you try and do it in the summer before hunting season, or is it just a constant a as you come up with things? Basically, as I come up with things. Um, this year, I'm trying to time things a little better and, and have everything done before the hunting season so guys can get their get their knives beforehand and be ready. Um, but yeah, it's basically as, as fast as I can come up with concepts and, and then get them into production and, and finish everything out in terms of sharpening and making the sheaths and whatnot. And as a business owner, obviously, you know, diving straight into this, there's things I'm sure that you've just been overwhelmed with and you know, you're, you're pretty much a one man band, so you yeah. have to handle everything. Yeah. W what would you say, you know, has been one of the biggest challenges for you? Uh, I guess probably juggling all the different emails and stuff I get, you yeah. know, so I, I have to spend an hour or two every morning, you know, going through them and responding to people. And then I guess, which just, is like the heart of your business, but it also yeah. takes time yep. away from, it takes time away from me. Yeah. Designing and, and marketing and making the knives. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a crucial part and, uh, something I try to focus on. I try to get back to guys immediately when they email. Um, but yeah, it's hard keeping up and remembering, you know, everything I have going and, and whatnot with, with yeah. that. So if people contact you right now, I mean, do you have product for them? Yeah. So I have quite a few, I have a skeleton, the skeleton skinners are in stock. Um, I have both the steel and titanium skeleton EDCs in stock. Um, the Ovis hunters are out of stock right now, but I will be taking pre-orders for those in S 35 VN here soon. Um, and then as far as the handled knives, those are going to be opening, uh, I'm going to be opening those pre-orders soon. I just wanted to get some actual pictures of the, uh, the handle material I'm going to be using. So when guys order, they can choose the exact color they want. 
Um, but yeah, I do have quite a few in stock right now in terms of the skeleton skinners and the uh, EDCs. How do people order their not? Do you have a website? Yep. So I have a website, kestrelknives.com. Spell that. Uh, K-E-S-T-R-E-L knives.com. Um, yeah, you can go onto my uh, e-commerce store and, and order up. And uh, yeah, it's all it's all pretty simple. Do all of the knives, I, I see you've got your Kuyu, you've got this. These are extra, right? Yeah, this is uh, extra for the Vias or Verde uh, mm-hmm. camo sheaths, but you can get them for any knife I make. Okay. What would you say the percentage of hunters that you get or customers of yours are sheep hunters? Would you say like more more people that order the knives are sheep hunters or more deer hunters, more elk hunters, or is it a, is it wide across the board? I think it's wide across the board. Yeah, you, I kind of get guys from all, all walks of life. Um, and, you know, obviously I kind of specialize in the ultralight knives, so I get a lot of mountain hunters, obviously. But I get guys from the you know, the South and the Midwest and, and whatnot on the East coast that, that order up. Um, but yeah, I'd say the majority are, are mountain hunters that just want a nice, you know, lightweight knife. That's going to, that's going to work. So you got anything else for us? Uh, what else do I got in here? Uh, I think I got all my models out there for you. And, and how do you recommend guys sharpen your knives? Um, so with my knives, I kind of tell guys whatever they're comfortable with. Um, so if they have a particular setup already, my knives, you know, you, you are able to sharpen them on whatever, but I do recommend the strop and sandpaper method. Um, that is, it's kind of a, an, an easy way to learn, um, how to sharpen by hand. If they don't necessarily want to take the time to learn that, I tell them to either get a small belt sander or a, what's called a, uh, a uh, work sharp sharpener. It's kind of basically a mini belt sander. Um, and that one, you kind of just drag the knife through as the belt's running. Um, and it sharpens it. And a lot of guys say, well, what angle do you sharpen at? And, and, uh, I don't really have a set angle that I sharpen at because I freehand everything on the belt sander. So what I, a, a good tip I give guys is to take a Sharpie and color the edge of your knife and then go ahead and use whatever sharpener you're going to use, and that way you can figure out and see exactly where you're taking away metal, um, and it kind of will show you, you know, what angle you need to be at. If people buy Kestrel knives and use them for a couple of years and want to send them to you for you to sharpen them on the belt sander, will you do that? Yep, that's something I offer, which is free sharpening for life. So if guys aren't comfortable and at the beginning of the season, you know, they want to send their knife in for sharpening, um, that's something I'll do. Just I just ask that they cover the shipping. Sure. Um, but yeah, you most of my knives, you know, I mean, you shouldn't, you know, I have guys get through multiple animals. So, you know, so sometimes... You know, the guys say, I didn't sharpen it the whole season. So, you know, that's one way to go, you know, is that you can send it to me, I'll sharpen it, send it back to you, and, and you can use it for the season, and then send it back into me, and I'll sharpen it again. Awesome stuff. Yeah, it's it's been great to, uh, when I first saw you, you know, come on the scene, it's been great to see the growth that you've had. And, you know, it's always great, I think, to see small business here, and entrepreneurs like yourself that take an idea, take a passion, and run with it. And you've certainly done that here with Kestrel. And, um, you know, looking at your product line, looking at the success you had with Giru, I mean, that kind of tells me right there when, when you know, you have extreme success on Giru um, and you get a lot of input. Uh, and then I see you at the shows and, you know, you got people all around you. And yeah. um, I love entrepreneurial spirit i love small business and it's it's you know great to see someone like yourself that's young and energetic and um you know wanting to chase after and and make a business yeah and you've done that yeah 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 it's been pretty fun just the the whole experience of you know building a brand and company um and then also being in the the hunting industry you know which i love um you know and i love what i do i love coming up with with designs and knives and, and I love that, you know, the, something that I touched and, and made is, 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 you know, going on a hunt with a guy somewhere and is part of the crucial task of, of breaking down the animal. So it's really, really cool that for me when I have guys come up to me at the shows or, or email me and say, man, you're, you know, I've never processed an animal so fast. This thing shows so sharp. 
And I just, I just love getting emails and pictures like that where, you know, guys. What do you like seeing your customers on Instagram or Facebook? What hashtags do you, um, do you see the most or do you recommend that they use? Uh, just hashtag Kestrel Knives or hashtag Kestrel Stories. Um, those, those are the kind of the two that I promote. Um, but yeah, there's, there's quite a few guys that, that will end up, you know, hashtagging it. And so it's kind of cool to go through it sometimes and, yeah. and see the different pictures and whatnot. What is your Instagram handle? Uh, my Instagram is at Kestrel Knives. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what I'm most active on and, and the most up to date. You know, I'll, I'll, I try to post a picture a day. Um, so yeah. I kind of, I, I either post a picture of a knife or a customer photo or, or something or some behind the scenes stuff mm-hmm. of me making it. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm most active on and, and have the biggest following on. And do you get a lot of DMs on Instagram? Oh yeah. It's an amazing tool, yeah. isn't yeah. it? I mean, it's, it's with, with my own Instagram and, and my own business, it seems like Instagram DM is the fastest and easiest way. Like you and I communicated, yep. you coming up here yep. to the Kuyu headquarters and, yeah. and meeting through, you know, Instagram yep. DM. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's great. Yeah. It's a great way to build business. It's it a great is. way to connect with your yep. with your uh, customers as well. Oh, it's yeah, it's excellent. You know, I, I've thus far I haven't spent a dime on on marketing, um, and most of it has just been through you know free social media and, and word of mouth. So mm-hmm. it's definitely and which is the best way. It is. It yeah, is I mean, you way. may get bigger reaches in other ways, but word of mouth and and growing fast but growing slow also is good where it's you know one person tells another person then they see a success story on instagram yeah they follow a hashtag you know you're seeing kestrel i'm seeing kestrel knives all over yeah and um hunters that come hunt with me you know it's pretty cool yeah no it is very cool it's it's cool how the hunting community has kind of migrated to it also and and so everybody's on there and it's it's always fun to look at everybody else's pictures and, and see what everybody's doing um well, but, thanks yeah. for coming up and uh, thanks for sharing your knowledge with us. And um, yeah, I love my Kestrel Knives. I encourage people to go find Nathan on Instagram, go to his website, check him out if they haven't. And um, it'll be another Giru project coming over the next year, you think? Yeah, I'm actually uh, working on one right now. It's going to be my Tahoe EDC, which is kind of my most popular um, knife. It's basically the Skeleton EDC with handles. Um, and guys are going to be able to choose steel, jimping, uh, blade length, and then the type of handle they want. So yeah, there'll be quite a few options and it'll be a good way for guys to, uh, obtain a knife for a discount. Yeah. So, and yeah. that's guru.com. That's G I R U.com. Yep. Uh, make sure to check Nathan out there. Um, go check him out at Kestrel Knives and on Instagram, Facebook too, or no? I'm on Facebook, but I don't update it too often. Yeah. Just. You know, Instagram's your go-to spot. Instagram is where you can find me. Yeah. What is your email as well? Uh, email is kestrelknives at gmail.com. Okay, perfect. Yep. Perfect. Well, buddy, thanks uh, for coming up and um, have a safe uh, drive back out. Where do you live from here? Uh, in the Bay Area, so it's about an hour 30 south of here. Gotcha. Do you have yeah. any shows or anything coming up that you'll be going to this summer? I or? actually do. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, the Out West Outdoors guys, uh, are actually, they put on a show in Redding, which is, I don't know, about three hours north of here, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's their second annual Sportsman's Expo. Um, and they're expecting quite a few people. It's free entry. Um, and so anyway, I'll have a booth there set up and, uh, you'll be able to purchase knives. And that is, I believe, April 1st and 2nd. Okay, so coming good. up here quick. But other than that, I just hit the, uh, trade shows, the major ones, um, wild sheep, uh, safari club international and the Western hunter. I can't <laughs> wait to get my hands on this little bad yeah, boy right yeah, there. Yeah, I know. Everybody's, everybody's... A mountain caper. Yeah, everybody sweet. came up to me at the shows, and they're like, when's that going to be released? When's yeah. that going to be released? Yeah. So, it's neat. Yeah. All right, buddy. Thanks. Yep. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.